What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. So here's the thing. This is an older game, but it just got its first like expansion. Like it just got like its first major thing. And so I figured we'd go back and check it on out. This is System Crash, which is a cyberpunk dystopian Shadowrun styled card game that recently just got its Underworld expansion. Now I've never played this game before. We're gonna check it out here today and we're gonna see if it's the kind of thing that we can get into. I am a fan of card games. Love card games, love board games, all that kind of stuff. I'm also an avid fan of Shadowrun. Therefore, I think this might just hit the nail right there on the head. Choosing our module. I've already made my profile. I am Splattercat. We're here. Now we gotta choose our module right now. And Neon Noir is the only thing available. We could do the Underworld, which is the expansion one. But seeing as I don't even know how to play the game, let's just start from the beginning, shall we? The San Angeles Sprawl rises up around you. Neon lit towers thrusting through smog to rake the night sky. You take a breath, almost smiling at the foul, familiar taste of the air. It's been more than a year since you were on the west coast. You're glad to be done with Europe and its miserable winters. The assassins didn't really help either. The Berlin job, the one Jackson promised would be a piece of cake, was anything but. The situation got messy and real fast. You left Berlin in a hurry, assassins hot on your tail. If you'd known you'd be tangling with the Syndicate, you'd never have accepted the offer. No use holding a grudge, though. Jackson died in Amsterdam. Bounty hunters ambushed your team in a dingy little cafe. Jackson and Summers were torn apart in the first barrage of gun gunfire. You barely made it out alive. You had to pay a black market body shop a fortune to graft you a new hand to replace the one you lost to a grenade. Rush job, and the color doesn't quite match. The team split up after Amsterdam, figuring that traveling alone would be less conspicuous. Six months you moved around the globe, staying one step ahead of Syndicate Hunters. Six months before you were satisfied that they lost the trail. And now you're back in your old stomping ground, back in San Anne. First order of business was getting a new console. You'd left yours in Amsterdam. And the kind of console you need, well, they don't really sell those at the mall. Black market cyberware ain't cheap, and you'd burn through most of your creds dodging hired killers. A bank loan was out of the question, and a background check would poke holes in your fake ID real quick. See, that's why you get the better sins. That's why you get, like, the rank 6 sin. That's why you don't get the rank 1, because that's got, like, caterpillar blood in it or something, and it's not even going to stand up to the most basic of scrutiny. If there's one thing you spend money on, you spend money on fake gun licenses, and you spend money on fake IDs. Everybody needs a really, really good fake ID and a really, really good fake concealed gun license in Shadowrun. And then you have a whole bunch of rank one burners that you use, like when you're just on missions or whatever, so that when you get scanned by cameras or whatever else, it just comes up with the wrong guy. And then the second you get done with the job, you just like chuck it in a gutter somewhere. Like, see, but you use the good one for all the serious transactions in your real life. People got to understand the rules of the Shadowrun game. There was only one option left, a loan shark. Miriam's a ruthless bitch, but hers were the only terms that you could stomach. She agreed to lend you the 5k you needed for a new hijati on the condition that you paid back 10. You didn't really have much choice. You can't buy a console without credits, and you can't earn credits without a console. If you don't pay back that debt, Miriam's gonna send her goons to collect your liver and the rest of your organs or whatever else they can sell to the chop shop. You got 30 days. Man, they're gonna take me down to Little Chiba. That's not gonna be fun. Hey, you still looking for work? Jojo's in the market for a runner he can rely on. You were the first one he thought of. Uh, yeah, let me see what I can do. A little bit of corporate espionage and sabotage, you know, usual shit. Uh, some bigwig upside is real interested in that new port deal. You hear about it? Nah, I didn't hear about it. Shit, well you gotta pay more attention. The city wants to upgrade the port, improve efficiency or whatever. And they're looking to plow some serious credits into it. Bunch of corps are bidding on a contract. Competition's pretty fierce for it. At least, that's what the talking heads on the evening news are saying. Smells like a chance to do some business to me. Opportunity, man, it's everywhere. If you're paying attention. Yeah, well, that's why I've got you, right? You sniff it out, I bring it in. It's a beautiful friendship, really. Yeah, friendship. Standard cut applies. 30% finder's fee for JoJo, 70% for you. We're on a deadline here, though. City Council starts reviewing bids in two weeks. Client wants to ensure that his is the only real contender. You in? Yep, I'm in. Where do we start? Postmaster Limited. They've got the current contract for port maintenance. City's making them bid to renew, so it can't have been that happy with the service. Shouldn't be hard to tip the scales even further. Now break into the offices, grab whatever data you can, and let's see how they run their operation. Alright, completing missions will advance the storyline and award you with new cards and credits. 
Before you can build custom decks, you will need to unlock the black market where runners go to trade illicit software and gear and to find new contracts. To unlock the black market, let's beat the first mission. Okay. You've got 30 days to pay back 10k you owe Miriam. After that, she'll send goons to come steal your organs. You take a moment to settle your expression into something blandly pleasant, then pick up the comm and enter the code for Miriam. After a moment, the connection is accepted. The screen brightens and Miriam's handsome features fill the display. An ember glows at her lips, smoke curling lazily from it. She takes a long drag on the cigarette, eyes narrowing in pleasure, then exhales slowly. Only then does she focus on you, mouth crooking into a sly smile. So, you enjoying the new console my money bought you? Worked with better, but it does the job. Well, something to aspire to, then. After all, what is life without ambition? Now why the call? You've got my money and wish to uphold your end of the deal? Miriam takes another pull of the cigarette, her expression amused and mocking. Or are you hoping to plead for an extension? So many beg for one, you know. Just a little more time. I'll get your money, I promise. I've heard all the excuses. It saddens me, but I have to be firm about these things. You understand, business is business. Neither of the above. Can I just make a courtesy call without somebody suspecting motives? She leans back and eyes you coolly. I don't have much time for courtesy, and I don't like being fucked around. Now, do you have my credits or not? I'm working on it. Don't bother me again until you've got the credits. The link cuts. All right. Let's go ahead and go to... Snooping. Break into the Portmaster Limited Bay offices, gain access to their system, and copy any financial records you can find. Okay, we've got a pre-selected deck. Let's do our thing. Only 100 credits? That's like nothing, dude. We can't even buy a pack of cigarettes with that. Man, my credit stick is light right now. These are player information displays. The PID distracts or attracts useful information such as how many credits the runner and his opponent have. As well as how many cards are in their hand, their deck, and their archive. But the most important value is each side's objective point score. As the runner and the opponent score objective points, their OP bar will fill up. The first one to reach their OP target value is the victor. Each side starts to run with a deck of at least 40 randomly shuffled cards. These cards represent agents, events, modifiers, and support cards that each side will try to use to achieve the objective. Okay. There's our starting hand. Before the run begins, each player draws a starting hand of six cards. If you aren't happy with your starting hand, you can redraw it. All right, so we've got a lobby security. We've got, what is that? Armor. So target, allied, non-mech agent gains armor plus two. We have assault, open fire, deals six damage to a target agent. We've got target, allied, non-mech agent gets plus two attack. We've got take cover, agents get plus one. And then we've also got a Neon Monger, who's an Anarch, apparently. Limitless, no limit to the number of these in your deck. Sure. I don't know what a good or a bad deck hand is right now, so... Postmaster Security chose to keep their starting hand. You chose to keep your starting hand. You play first. This is the command interface. Through it, you manage your forces, monitor your opponent's moves, and attempt to achieve your run's objective. The screen is split in two halves. The top half is your opponent's, the bottom half is your forces. Each player has a limited number of command slots for bringing cards into play. The front row of command slots are for agents. The back row of command slots are for support cards. Modifier cards are played during agents in play. Each agent has three slots for beneficial modifiers and three for harmful. Some runs, both sides will start with special condition cards. If a condition card is in play, you can hover over it. It changes the nature of a run. In order to bring cards into play, they will need to be played from your hand. All right, so... The draw phase, you draw one card from the deck and place it into your hand. The exception to this is during the first round of play. The player draws zero cards while the second player draws one as normal. During a player's resource phase, their credit pool will automatically increase by one to a maximum of ten credits. To play a card, you got enough credits in your credit pool to pay the cost. Okay. Sounds good. We've got one credit. We can play any number of cards in our hand as long as we have the credits for it. All right. Sounds good. Now, the only thing I can play right now is this dude. So we're going to put him in right there. You have played an agent card. Agents have a number of stats. They have positive and negative modifiers. Yeah, I assume attack, defense, and HP. That's about what I figured. Agents come into play exhausted unless they have haste. Exhausted agents will ready at the start of the controller's next turn. I don't think I have anything else I can play for right now because I have no credits, so... Hover the mouse over the archive, and I think we're good. Innocent bystander. What does that do? 
just caught in the crossfire. No limit to the number of copies, so I think an innocent bystander maybe takes up a slot for one of my other guys. I don't know. Yeah, let's put some armor on this guy. It's kind of weird not dragging and dropping. I thought I would just drag and drop it up there. Yep, play it. We'll put a little bit of body armor on our Anarch. And then maybe we will put a gun on him as well. Yeah, do that. Give him a gun and give him some armor. Keep him rocking for right now. What is this right here? What did I pick up? An Anarch. Zeke. He costs 3 credits, 11 HP, 5. Okay, Zeke's got you back. All right, I'm going to need to see some ID, sir. <laughs> I like the cards and everything, though. I can already tell I'm going to get addicted to this in my free time. I can already tell. During a player's combat phase, each agent they control will automatically attack. Agents that are stunned or exhausted cannot attack. Okay. Oh, the innocent bystander is his. Okay, I see what... I thought they meant that, like, these four were mine and these four were his or whatever. I see what they mean now. Gotcha. Alright, we're gonna play Zeke right over here. Let's get Zeke into position real fast. He's got a little bit of armor, so hopefully Zeke is okay. Uh, innocent bystander is unfortunately dead. It's a bad day to be an innocent bystander. Don't be that guy. Another innocent bystander. They don't even do anything, though, except for block my path. Apparently, it's not like Magic the Gathering where you reflect damage on one another. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to play that card right there so that we can deal six damage. Oh, wait, that hurts my guys? No, I thought we were playing that row. Oh, weak, dude. Super weak. What is this right here? Battle plan. Agents you control get attack plus one. All right. I've only got one credit left, man. That sucks. I just gave up my advantage right there. I was winning. I was winning. I was winning so good. We just killed off our super awesome card, guys. Feels bad. Feels bad. Hacking two at the start of your turn. Gain two OP. Yeah, play Maddox. Looks good. Uh, play a card right there to defend us. And then we don't have anything else going on. So let's kill off his security guard real fast. Unfortunately, we've kind of lost the initiative, which feels pretty terrible. All right, so we want take cover. Give everybody a little bit of armor. Take cover again. I'm going to open fire on innocent bystanders because apparently I'm just an asshole like that. We'll get them up and out of that slot so maybe I can do something soon. He's dead, so we don't have to worry about him. He's definitely keeping the enemy in front of us right now. Apparently, he's got some victory points. Feels bad. If I hadn't played that first card, we would have been okay. Oh, as long as I keep her alive, we get hacking points. Oh, nice, dude. So we're getting objective points right there just by, like, staying alive. I don't really have anything else to play, so we're going to have to do what we do here. He might outrun us. I don't know. We'll see how it plays. We got Zeke back. Nice. Uh, put Zeke somewhere. Yep, play Zeke right there. Zeke's gonna be a heavy hitter for us. I don't have any hand I don't have any like hand left. Unfortunately, my hand economy is like hosed right now. What else do I have? Who are you? Five damage, six health. She's Jessica Razor. She's a criminal. When she comes into play, our opponent draws a card. So maybe she's like a loudmouth or something. Maybe that's the storyline behind it. Yeah, she'll sell information to anybody who has the credits. That's what I figured. We should be all right now, except for right there. Hopefully, we draw another critter on the next turn. Or maybe not. Oh, we just won. Never mind. Nice. So, we were victorious. Credits earned. 100. Got him. Uh, so, we can get a bronze reward. We've got an ice program. Countermeasures to reduce hacking effects. 
And OP captured by enemy agents by two. Okay, so that's the counterplay. We also have a mech right there. The X-32 Paladin. He's so badass. Hell yeah, dude. That's what I'm talking about right there. Good job. Security give you any trouble? Nope. Piece of cake. Good. That's what JoJo likes to hear. Nice and clean. The data you pulled is solid. Client had a look and said it's pretty obvious why the city wants to dump their asses. Too long sucking the government teat. Too long without any real competition. Management's bloated. Costs are bloated. Client wants you to bump up those costs even further. Just to make absolutely sure. Portmaster uses a transport subcontractor, Euphrate, to break into their offices and upload the doctored files JoJo's sending. Their adjusted costing schedules. Euphrate will pass on the increased cost to Portmaster. Portmaster is going to fold those costs into their port bit. All right. Let me know when the files are uploaded. Your comm link opens to show a young man with bleached hair smirking at you. Hey, loser, how goes the tricks? Uh, pretty good, thanks for asking. Yeah, I don't really care. I'm just making conversation, man. Listen, I gotta get to my gig and you said you wanted it on the next tournament, right? All right, killer. We're setting one up right now. Getting some wicked buzz. Lots of excitement. Plenty of big names that are eager to sign up. I know you're not in the big leagues, but you could probably make a few creds. I'm going to send you the coords and a registration pass, but you might want to get in some practice first. You don't want to embarrass yourself, right? Neil looks over his shoulder in the background. You hear a woman giggling. Yeah, sorry. I didn't get that. Look, I got to go. Business, you fucking stay frosty, champ. I'm going to check you at the arena. As your card collection grows, try out new deck strategies to counter the strengths and exploit the weaknesses of opponents you will face. To experiment with different cards, visit the black market. Alright, from this screen you can browse your cards, build custom decks, and trade with the black market. Alright. So we've got like our cipher deck right now. You left click on cards in your collection to add them to the deck. Left clicks on cards in your deck. Okay. Click on the deck name to edit the name of your deck. Use these filters to find agents, modifiers. All right. Makes sense. And what kind of agents and stuff we got going on. So those are our modifiers right there. We've got one of two, but that was a really good card for us. I feel like it did okay. So for the cipher deck, we've got some ice right there. You can only run 40 out of 40. Draw three cards, okay. Andrew Rickson, draw two cards. We've got Hendrix, who's like a heavy hitter samurai. All right. Probably get rid of innocent bystanders. If I can find anything else around that plays a little heavier, I'd prefer it. Didn't I pick up a robot or something? I thought I had a robot in here somewhere. Didn't I? I swear to God, I had a robot in here somewhere. Hmm. There he is. I knew I'd find him. Put that fool in the deck. Yup, we gotta have the robot. He's expensive, but I bet he'll help. And then we'll go with the attack boost bonus. We'll go with the hacking block. And we'll go with... Oh, I don't know. Maybe one innocent bystander. I don't want to overweight my deck on one side versus the other. We'll see what happens. So I've got a whole bunch of new stuff in here. What is that right there? The Matrix software vulnerability? Gain 5 OP and draw a card. Oh wow, that's pretty good. Do I have anything I can swap that for over here? Or do I have to buy that? Oh, it costs a thousand. Gotcha. Alright, put the bystander back. Alright, we'll play around. This seems like one of those games that a lot of metagame knowledge goes into it if you played it a lot. Break into the Euphrate, upload the doctor copies of their costing schedule to their primary work server. Done. Let's do it. Easy peasy. We're gonna make this happen. Uh, we've got attack. We've got a little bit of ice. We've got a cyberware junkie. Let's redraw. I'd like things to be a little bit cheaper. 
on the front play. That's much, much better. I'll keep that. I'm not going to be able to do much on the first turn, but it'll be all right. So you freight, redraw, I play first. Okay. I'm going to play that for my five victory points right now. I don't see a reason not to. So that's an innocent bystander right there. I'm going to leave the innocent bystander, and hopefully it doesn't get buffed. I'm going to play my hacker right there. That way I can start getting two victory points every single turn. Uh, security's been played right there. A bit of a bummer, but we'll kind of mess with it. What does that card do? Whenever an enemy agent is put into play, draw a card. What's that one? Weapon stash. Search your deck for a weapon or armor card and put it into your hand. Okay. Uh, we got three right now. I'm going to play Battle Plan. And I'm going to play a pistol on her so she deals a little bit more damage. I'm trying to get this guy out of the way quick. I'm not trying to mess around with this dude over the long term. Ooh, crippling shot. Okay, not bad. All right, so that nerfed my attack by two right there. Pretty cool. I like this game. This is fun. What is that right there? Uraburos 149 at that side. Okay. That cost me one to play. What else do I have in here? Yeah, let's play the worm. We'll play some armor on her just to make sure that she stays up. Play that guy right there just to act as a stopgap. And right now we're generating four victory points per turn. All we got to do is really hold the line. We don't need to do anything too crazy. Mm, they got battle plan now too. Gross. Ouchie. Okay, we're gonna have to come up with something soon. There's our two victory points though. We're almost there. I'm gonna put my anarchist in on that side. Uh, we're gonna play body armor on on it on her. Honestly, we just need her to keep generating points. Uh, we're gonna put in security surveillance so that every time he plays a card, I get a card. And I'm going to pull that pistol out of my deck for later. Maybe add a little bit more damage. We've killed off one of his agents, so we'll probably win on the next turn if he doesn't fill in an agent right there. And he did. How did I know? Man, I'm going to have to defend that innocent bystander. I don't really want to, but I'm going to have to. Oh, we got another worm. Nice. Sweet. Uh, we win on the next turn anyways, so no biggie, no harm, no foul. Let's go ahead and... My dudes are getting pretty tuned up right now. Just keep holding the line, please. Yeah, let's get that worm into play, too. That looks good. It's a simple game. Like, it's not hard to pick up. It works exactly the way you expect it to work. Like, it pretty much, it plays out like you expected. Ew. He machine gun. If he machine gun her, he probably would have done better, though. Well, no, he couldn't have killed her because of her armor, so... And there's the victory for us. Four more victory points going out. Oh, yeah, six more victory points. Done. We've uploaded the file and we're ready to run. 100 more credits. So we've got Lewis. When Lewis comes into play, search your deck for an implant console or chem card and put it into your hand. Okay, we've got Neural Backlash. Enemy controller loses OP equal to five, plus an extra five for every support card they have in play. Ooh, that's nasty. Gross. A uh, moto. On play, when another Harlequin is played, deal two times the number of Harlequins you control and damage to a random enemy agent. Okay. Kind of situational, but he's got like a sliver thing going on. Fucking A. Don't think we'll have much to worry about from Portmaster now. One down, three to go. Same game plan. You break into their office, grab any data you can, financials, personnel records, whatever. We're looking for shit we can exploit to bump them out of the running. Who are our targets? Like I said, there are three. Carter International Transportation, Morgan and & West, and McNulty Construction. Only one other serious contender for the bid at this point, Amtec. Clients kept his employer a secret, but it's gotta be Amtec. They're the ones who stand the profit from the others going down. Yeah, it doesn't really matter to me as long as the money's good, the job will get done. See, that's why I like you. You're a true professional. Now get out there and work your magic. 
All right, so we got all kinds of stuff to do right now in the Neon Arena, an underground Sim Stim arcade for runners. All right, we can give that a go. We can practice, or we can do the tournament. Oh, nice. That's kind of a cool feature. I like that. So you can run your deck against other things and make adjustments and whatnot if you really, really want to before you go on to any more missions and get, like, choked out. That's pretty cool. I can dig that. Uh, this game is called System Crash. If you liked it, check it out down below. I got a link for you as well as a link to the new DLC if you're an old school player that's been playing this for a while. I like the aesthetic. I like the card game. I think it's a lot of fun. So if you're a card fan, it might be worth checking out if you're looking for a new single player experience. I'll see y'all later. Thanks for stopping on by. Hi, do and take care, everybody.